Hi everyone, welcome to New Bear. I'm Monique and today we're looking at carbone rings. Carbone rings are found in everyday items like curtains and pot holders, but crafters also use them in crochet and knitting projects as well as macrame and tatting projects. The rings come in a variety of sizes as well as materials. They can be plastic or acrylic, wood or metal. When you're choosing your ring, remember that sometimes the material matters and sometimes it doesn't. So you wouldn't choose a metal ring for a project which is going to be hanging outside in the rain. No one wants rust in their work. You can cover any kind of ring you want, just choose the size of the ring and the material of the ring based on what your end project will be. Let's have a closer look. Something you might want to consider is the profile and depth of the ring. Now I realise this ring is a lot smaller but pretending they're both the same size we could use them for the same project and get a slightly different look between the two. This depth measures 7mm on both rings. You can see one is flat and one is rounded. It's surprising how much of a difference that can make to the end look of your project. We only need one shuttle to cover our ring, but it's what happens in our pattern afterwards that will determine what we work with. If you can't climb out from the carbone ring, you can use one shuttle and hide tails as you cover the ring. If you can climb out, then you have a choice of continuous thread or two shuttles. Continuous thread means you'll only have two tails to worry about at the end. Working with two shuttles will give you two tails at the start and two tails at the end. I'd strongly suggest using a shuttle with a pick or a hook. You can use a separate crochet hook, but you're going to be constantly putting it down and picking it up. You're much better to have a shuttle with a hook or a pick. For a single shuttle, the first thing we need to think about is do we leave a tail? Again, that's going to depend on your pattern and what happens after the ring is covered. We can tat over our tail. We can also use magic loops, but I'll show you how to get rid of tails at the end. For the moment, I've got quite a long tail because I want to use it later. So when I hold the thread on top of the ring with our thumb and then let it fall to the back. Now if this was continuous thread we'd have a second shuttle back here but that's the only difference between a long tail start or a continuous thread start. We still hold the thread over the ring as so and let it fall to the back. Using the pick Reach through the front, pick up that loop, pass your shuttle through and pull it up. Pull that thread towards you, come from underneath the ring, grab that thread, pull the loop up and out the back, pass your shuttle through and pull it up. We have first half of our stitch and the second half of our stitch. Now we just repeat those steps for the next stitch. It's going to tighten this up. You want to pull your stitches pretty tightly around the ring. We let the thread fall to the back, scoop it through the front, pass your shuttle through that loop and pull it up, pull it towards you, from underneath, make a loop to the back and pass your shuttle through. And now we tighten our stitch. So again, thread falls to the back of the cabine, come through the front, pull up a loop. So shuttle through and pull it up, bring that towards you to pull that loop down, come from underneath, pull the loop out to the back and pass your shuttle through. So pull your stitches pretty tightly, we want them to be firm. And you can 
count them. I have one, two, and three. One more. If we want to work a joining picot, we can pop a stitch marker on our thread. Now our stitch marker is going to be a pretty small picot, but I'm going to show you anyway. And now we just work our stitch as we were before. And that's going to give us our pico. You can see that's given us a very tiny pico. If I wanted it a little bit larger, but I still want it as a joining pico, I'm going to make my stitch and use a thick paper clip. I'm just going to do the same thing, but it's going to make that a little bit bigger for me. Four decorative picots, a little bit thread space after your last stitch. Work the next stitch. And snug them together. If you want to use a gauge for your picots, hold the gauge behind the ring as you work your stitch. Pull your stitch up. And I would work a second stitch just to help secure that before I pulled the gauge out. Your stitches tend to loosen up around the cabone ring, which is why I'm saying to pull them pretty tight. Now we can snug that together because I've pulled it so tightly it's a bit tricky to snug across. If you want to use a gauge but you find it tricky to hold onto everything at the same time, work your stitch, leave it reasonably loose, pop your gauge in and then adjust your thread. Okay, we're going to pretend that I've worked all the way around. You can see I've got a bit of a loop of thread here. Ignore that. That's just me coming from this side around to this side. And I've left a bit of a gap so that you can see I've got two, this one's coming a bit loose. I've got two double stitches here. This is my last double stitch. This is my tail from where I started and my shuttle from connecting the two. So now I'm going to snug that together. I'm going to do the shoelace trick here because I want my tail to become my working thread so I need it on the top. Pull that down and I'm wrapping my hand for a 
chain. I'm going to work a straight chain to make a hanging loop. There's a couple of different techniques you can use for a straight chain. One of my favourites is the lock chain. I'm not going into details of a lock chain now, but there's a link to that video in the description box if you need it. So this is one way we can climb out when we're using a single shuttle. So once that is the length you want your hanging loop to be, obviously if it was a proper project I would have made it a lot longer. Bring that around to our joining pico. This is the one we made with the paper clip and this is the one we made with the stitch marker. You can see they're quite, both are actually quite hard to see. But we'll go, I'm going the wrong way. We'll go with paper clip one so we're coming from underneath pull your core thread down through to the back and from there you would tie a square knot and hide your tails work to where you want the ring to be now this is just my tail I've just tied it down here to stop it from flapping around trying to keep it out of the way the difficulty with putting rings on the outside is holding the bulk of the carbone ring while trying to work the tattered ring. If you place your pointer finger through the ring, this is the front side of my work, so I'm going from front to back, putting my thumb on top, we're essentially holding the carbone ring in the pinch. This helps us to get that first stitch in nice and close to the stitches that are already on the carbone. So I'm going to wrap my hand for a ring. That first stitch in nice and close. Now, from here, you can take the ring off your finger if you like and hold it like this. But I prefer not to because as I'm working my stitches along this thread, the carbone ring sort of dangles around and knocks in my hand and drives me a little bit crazy so I prefer to hold it so that it's over my finger the ring is secured that also helps to prevent too much stress on this thread meaning hopefully we won't have a gap when we're finished When it's time to close the ring, start closing it. I like to place the start and end of my ring against the cabone and then pull because that gives me extra support on my stitches and it doesn't pull base of my ring away from the top of the cabone. Now we just continue on with our stitches as we were before. You can just up our designs by touching a central motif. I love how much a simple motif in the middle can change the overall look of the design. 
to add a central motive, we cover the carbone ring until we reach the point where we want to attach it. Now we're going to continue working our double stitches almost exactly as we've been doing. I say almost exactly because everything is the same except we're going through this pico. That is the only difference. So start with the thread underneath, reach through the pico, pull the loop up, pull your shuttle through that loop as we've been doing. I'm just going to hold on to this loop because I want to pull forward otherwise. So I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger so you can see we pull the thread to the front as we've been doing all along. Come from underneath through the pico. You're grabbing that blue thread, pulling it through to the back as we've been doing. And your shuttle will run through that loop. And adjust your stitches. And continue on as before. I'll show you again thread goes to the back, come down through that pico and pull the thread up through the pico, shuttle through that loop, thread to the front, come from underneath through the pico, Grab that thread and take it to the back. And shuttle through the loop. And then adjust. If you want the first round of the Gabon ring to be a different colour and you can climb out, take both your threads and tie them in a square knot, leave a long tail. This is also known as a weaver's knot. I'm using this kind of knot because it's very tiny. It's easy to hide it. Take the tail of the colour that's going to be wrapping your ring. A little bit of tape on the end of your tail. And then stick that down to the carbone. Now this is this is wood, so sticky tape doesn't tend to stick so well. So I'm actually going to tape that, wrap it and tape it back on itself. Like so. It's going to hold my tail. And then tension the tail along the center of the ring. Now this will slip and slide. It's not very easy to hold it in the middle like that so I'll be, I'll be surprised if it stays there. Holding that with my thumb. I'm now going to start working my stitches. And that tape is just going to hold my tail until I get it secured. Bring the first half right up to that weaver's knot. Can see that slipped off the center which doesn't really matter I just prefer it to run down the middle if I can get it to do that So I do that all the way around to the other side. You can put that tail into the carbone ring or it would be easier when you wrap your hand for either 
the split ring or the chain, it would be easier if that tail went into that element. We can tape our magic loops in a very similar way. Place the tape over the front and the back of the loop. Stick that onto your cabone. And now you would work your stitches through the center here. Once that was secured enough, just grab your scissors, slice the tape open, and you're good to continue. How much fun are they? I hope you enjoyed it, especially since your Christmas pattern includes a carbone ring this year. I'm still tweaking it. I'm hoping to have it ready in the next couple of weeks, but that just gives you enough time to practice. See you next time.